32, and I'll be brief. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation. They seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonas the prophet. For as Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South shall rise up in judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Father, we thank you and we ask that your holy spirit will encourage the church and help us to go forth carrying the testimony of our lord jesus christ father let the hand of god be upon the church and let many souls be added to your kingdom as we give you thanks in jesus name amen god bless you you may be seated I want to encourage the church that we don't preach in vain. And we have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ in vain. But in the spirit realm, Jesus must be respected. In the natural realm, Jesus must be respected. So we find here, the Bible says, when the people were thick together, Jesus began to say, this is an evil generation. They seek a sign. And there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonas the prophet. Jesus spoke these words just over 2,000 years ago. And when Jesus spoke these words, he described them at the time as an evil generation. And I want to say that the generation has not got any better. And we are facing a generation now that I could say is even more evil than the generation that Jesus preached to. The Bible says in the end times, evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse. And when Jesus ministered, what all people were interested in, many of them, was I want to see a sign. Because they heard of the fame of Jesus. that They wanted to see a sign. And you'd be amazed, many people come to church, and that's the same mentality. They want to see a sign. They want to see a healing. They want to see a, a miracle. But the greatest sign that you can ever experience is not one that you see, it's one that you experience. The greatest miracle of all miracles is the new birth. Where a man can leave the domain of the kingdom of darkness. And through believing in Jesus, they can become a child of the king and they enter into the kingdom of God, dear son. I don't believe if you raise the dead, that dead will necessarily be saved. I don't believe that if you heal the sick, that sick person will necessarily be saved. I don't believe if you open the blind eyes and all the other miracles that Jesus did, that people will necessarily be saved. So now, Jesus gave them a sign. He says, 
you seek a sign, and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. So what they desired, Jesus says, I'm not going to give you the type of sign you're looking for. But there is a sign that's coming. That sign is like unto to the sign of Jonas the prophet. And when you understand Jonas the prophet, and you can read about it in your own time, then you can understand why Jesus says that this generation, the men of Nineveh, will rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. Now in the time of Jonas, and you need to understand the heart of God. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what you look like, God loves you. And God became a man because of his love and his devotion for humanity. And when you look into the scriptures, the Bible says that Jesus Christ was, was slain before the foundation of the earth. That means God in time unveiled his redemptive plan through Jesus. And when this redemptive plan was in place... All people were interested in is a miracle. So let's look at what happened to Jonas, of which many of you are familiar. God wanted not to judge the Assyrian nation. The Assyrians were cruel. They were instruments that God used to chastise Israel. But then God, God will deal with us for a while, but then God will also want to help us and lead us to repentance. And whenever God wants to lead anyone to repentance, he changed their situation. And you might be passing through church today and you may not be saved, but God will lead you into, into a situation that could cause you to change your mind and to repent. So God says, let me give a sign that would cause the ungodly man to repent. And God says, I'm going to give a sign, and I'm paraphrasing. So he called his prophet Jonah. And if Jesus gives you a compliment, you need to know, well, Jesus knows what he's saying. And Jesus, Jesus complimented Jonah. Because he was a good preacher. And when God wants to save a soul, he, he sends his best. So Jonah went and he's, he didn't want to go. And I'm not going to talk about the, the, the fish that swallowed him up. I want to talk about the effect of him coming back. When Jonah's, Jonah was swallowed, first of all, he was disobedient. Jesus was found in perfect obedience. But when Jonah realized that where he was, he didn't have to be. Just like some of us, where you are in the spirit realm, you don't have to be. Because Jesus has made a way for you. Jonah found himself in a fish's belly. No electricity. No central heating. No food. Dark, wet, no hope. I don't know if the fish's digestive juices started to eat at his skin. I'm not sure. But possibly. Three days is a long time. And he didn't know if it was day or night because it was dark. No sunlight. But when he changed his mind, take note. When Jonah changed his mind... In his dark situation. And sometimes God allows a dark situation to come to you. That you can change your mind. So Jonah changed his mind because the situation weren't good. And God now decided, Jonah, 
You know, when he said to uh, Paul, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. God is saying, Jonah, I've been trying to get you just to go and do what I ask you to do. But you've been so rebellious, you've got to feel something. So he repented within the fish's belly. Then God spoke to the fish. And you've heard me say this many times. When the fish vomited up Jonah, can you imagine? Just, just imagine now the typical holiday resort. Jet skiing, what, paragliding, some are getting massage, some are blazing a barbecue, some are putting on sun lotion, getting tanned, etc. Some are, whatever they're doing. And then a big fish come. And out of the fish came a man. He didn't have a haircut. He didn't look good. But you can imagine, he washed himself off. Said nothing. And then the first thing he said, in 40 days, Nineveh shall be destroyed. Jonah was the best preacher. Hear me carefully. Jonah didn't just say it. He said it with purpose. He said it with anointing. He said it with conviction. And even the ungodly king believed him. And when the king of Nineveh heard that this prophet disappeared but came out of a fish's belly and now he's got a message for my city, the king put the entire city on fasting. And not just that. Even the animals were fasting. And then, Jonah, he's, he's, he was still a mess because he didn't want them to be saved. I hope we're not like that. I hope we're not like Jonah where, you know, if somebody hurts you, you don't want them to be saved. Or somebody did wrong to you, you don't want them to be saved. Or a particular people um, damaged you so much, you don't want them to be saved. We can't be like that. That's a fine. I commend what I heard on the radio. They're commemorating the 25th day since the murder of Stephen Lawrence. And I was listening to LBC and I heard him say that, um, you know, after all these years, I've now forgiven the murderers of my son. He says, I've become a Christian, and I realize that uh, unless I forgive them, I myself cannot be forgiven. So because of the new birth, he repented of his bitterness, he rep and he forgave them. Now, LBC is not a Christian station. But when I heard it, I said, thank you, Jesus. What a testimony on a secular radio station. I had to forgive them because Jesus was willing to forgive me. Now, when the king repented at the preaching of Jonah, and there are people in the church the Holy Ghost knows you. I'm not going to point at you. Some of you need to repent over issues. We don't have a Jonah in here, but we have one who's greater than Jonah. It's not me. It's Jesus. And Jesus is saying, listen, when, you, when Jonah preached, people repented. But when I preach, nobody repents. Jesus demands respect. Because of who he is. He's not just a man. He's almighty God. Robed in flesh. So Jesus now was getting it right. He says, Jonah was a sign to the Ninevites. So shall the son of man be to this generation. So when Jesus was preaching, he was really saying, Jonah was a sign to the Ninevites. And I am a sign to this generation. What happened to the Ninevites should be happening to this generation. Then Jesus says, I want to prove something to you. He says, the queen of the south. 
The queen of the south is going to be used in judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them because she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Now let's just put it in right perspective. Solomon is just a man. But God gave him the gift of wisdom. His wisdom was so profound that the queen came all the way from the south just to be in the presence of a man to hear his wisdom. But the scripture says, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness, sanctification and redemption. So Jesus is the wisdom of God manifested in flesh. Solomon only had a portion of wisdom, but Jesus is the wisdom of God. So there is no greater wisdom than Jesus. And when Jesus ministered with unction, with anointing, with the wisdom of God, they says no. So Jesus says, and this is where Jesus exercised even more wisdom. Jesus says, okay, you are an evil generation. You're seeking for a sign. But no, there's only one sign. That you will get. That's the sign of the prophet Jonas. And we understand the sign of the prophet Jonas. Three days and three nights in the well. Jesus, three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. When Jonas came out of the well's belly, people repented. When Jesus came out of hell, he was exalted, he was glorified, he sent the promise of the Father, he empowers his church to preach the gospel. Jesus says, when we were in our ignorance, God winked at it, but now he commands all men everywhere, irrespective of color, nation, creed, language, culture, all men everywhere to repent. And if we don't don't repent, Jesus says. I'll show you what it's going to be like uh, when he comes on the day of judgment. I'm going to raise up the Ninevites uh, who repented at one who is far less uh, than me. They repented at Jonas. But I'm telling you, greater than Jonas is here. They repented. They came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. But one greater than Solomon is here. That's why every generation is going to be judged when they hear the teaching of Jesus. He don't want to judge us. He loves us and God has committed unto the church the preaching of the gospel. Let me encourage all you preachers. The gospel works every time. People might think, you might hear people think they don't believe that stuff. Well, listen. It's either we believe it and live or reject it and die. And, you know, I, I do so many funerals. And when I do funerals, I, when I see a person that's dead and you knew them once, you think, God, it can't be this way. There got to be more to it than this. I hear the Bible says it's appointed unto men once to die and after death to judgment. And I was preaching at this funeral and I'm saying, I says, listen, you show me the man that has failed to keep, to keep the first appointment. There is none. You can 
can be smart. You can be a millionaire. Whatever you, whatever accolade or attribute you might have, when death comes knocking on your door, you can't say bypass me. Death will hit every man. So the word of God is truth. We can't fail the first appointment. And if you can't fail the first appointment, what makes you think you will not be there at the judgment seat of Christ? Because he says, after that appointment, then the judgment. But I thank God for the gospel because Jesus gave this to preach. Not because he wants to judge man, because he wants to save us. And when we realize if you don't take the solution, you got to receive the judgment. You see the solution or judgment. The choice is before every man that lives. And I hasten to add, there's my brother. He's looking left and right. He doesn't like this part of the preaching because I always give a little testimony how he helped to push me further in the judgment. But I, I stopped listening to him one day and I listened to Jesus. I accepted the solution. And as a, you see, saying, I, you should say amen. When I accepted the solution, I left him in the world, left the other brother, just me and Jesus. And one by one, they came for the solution themselves. One by one. Now, all eight to my family, baptized, filled, involved in ministry. That's the solution we need. Jesus will be honored. He will be honored in life. He will be honored in death. That's why the Bible says every knee shall bow of beings in heaven, beings on earth, and beings under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He will be honored. And I'm not one of these negative preachers. I don't like to preach hell. But I want to say this, without Jesus, we're all doomed. I want the, the team that's going to Portugal to come. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let us stand, church. Let's move swiftly for time's sake.